Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to talk to you about this uh, slightly intimidating sounding topic, I suppose. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, this work was actually supported by the Department of Energy, and I'd like to thank my colleague, uh, Troy Van Voorhis, and the people that did the work, uh, Nick, Dan, and Gia, along with Eric and Shane. OK, so what's the problem? We're interested in an old, old problem that's proved very, very difficult to solve. Um, and that is, in solar cells, that it doesn't matter where, what energy the photon comes in at, if it comes out at all, it always comes out at the same voltage. So if you hit a solar cell with a very high energy photon, it, say it's silicon, it comes out at 0.7 volts. If you hit a lower energy photon, it may not be absorbed at all. And so we'd like to fix that. Uh, and the way we're, that we're going to try and do it is to um, split the high energy photons. So take the really the blue and the green photons and cut them in half and see if we can make two electrons out. So basically, this is the, the idea, that if we can um, double the electricity, double the current coming from the blue, green, and maybe red part of the spectrum, then we can improve the performance of, of solar cells. And just to quantify the expected benefit, if you could do this, you might move away from the so-called single junction limit, which is if you had a single material, uh, that the efficiency limit there is about 30. And in principle, you could get up to 40% this way. So that's actually a significant increment in solar technology. All right, so I said before that this is a, an old problem. Um, so what's the challenge? What's the technical challenge? Well, in a regular material, if you photo excite a electron, say, way up into the, the, up into the band somewhere, typically what happens is it just drops back down and makes a lot of heat. And, and so this is why all photons that come in make the same voltage. Now, what you'd like to happen is that that electron that went all the way up might somehow, on its way down, boost an, an extra electron. And in fact, in some materials, you can do this a little bit. You've got to work very hard. Uh, typically, you've got to pump this material deep in the UV, where, incidentally, there's not a lot of sunlight. But it is possible every now and again to get an extra electron this way. Now, in it, what we realized, though, is that in, uh, in molecular materials, and specifically certain uh, carefully engineered molecular materials, then there was a, a different set of physics uh, working. So instead of looking like the previous structure, it actually looks something like this. So in this system, and I have to use the word spin here, but so the, pho the photon comes in, it boosts an electron up, and now it's not possible for that electron to come down anymore because it would break the spin conservation rule. And so it's stuck there. And in fact, the only way that it can get back down is it could emit light, but that takes a long time. That's nanoseconds. Or it turns out that it's possible for it to break into two. It's allowed. That's an allowed process for it to split. And so what we've got now is we have spin working for us. That it's, it's unique amongst this material system that we can efficiently split excited states that are being generated by, generated by the photon, and we can split them into only two. They, they won't relax down to one. That's a, now a disallowed process. And that goes by the, this, this process was first uh, sort of speculated about in the 1960s, and it goes by the uh, title of singlet exciton fission. And just to pass that, singlet refers to the spin, zero, uh, the exciton is the excited state, and fission is this process of breaking into two. All right, so uh, there's been a lot of science done on this over the last uh, few years. This has got to be quite a hot topic. And uh, my colleague Troy uh, in, in chemistry at MIT um, has got some models now of how this process works. And what we, we're seeing here is um, we have, on the left, that's the excited state in the particular material that does this, called pentacene. And then in about 80 femtoseconds, we know now that it splits actually into two states. It may be a little hard to recognize, uh, whoops, recognize that um, the splitting there, but we've gone from one excited state to two on the right-hand side. <clears throat> and we've done a lot of science on this, and we found it's actually very robust, that lots of materials will do it if we know how to engineer them correctly. And so it's not, uh, it's not completely idiosyncratic, this, this process. What I want to just finish up with, though, and this is coming out next week, is an example of this in action. And I think it's the first solar cell uh, where someone's actually been able to do this and make more than uh, one electron per photon. And so 
here we have, uh, and the key point is that it's one electron per photon in the visible. Whereas people have been able to do it before by pumping the daylights out of it in the deep UV, and now we can get it in the visible because this process is so much more efficient. And so the key thing to recognize is there at about 670 nanometers, which is right on the edge of the visible spectrum, we managed to get about 1.1 electrons per photon. So it's the proof of principle that this can work. All right, so let me summarize then. So what's, wh where is this going? What's the widget, basically, at the end? So the two points I want to make here is that uh, we think that there's some unique physics here, um, and this is the only way to do this, um, and we've shown that it, I think that it works. The next step is to do, to bring it more towards practice and to say, look, what we'd really like to do is use this as a coating on silicon solar cells. So if we absorb the blue and the green light in the silicon solar cell, split it up into multiple excited states, and then get that into silicon, then we can have a system that uh, should be able to increase silicon's efficiency to, from 20-ish to nearly 30, which would be a significant impact. Okay, so that's the end of the talk. Thanks.